All right, so just about to go live. So welcome everybody. Ralph Havens here with Jen, Jen Havens. And I'm super excited to do this. It's been a long time coming. Jen's um, Unbecoming the Modern Woman um, interview. So so welcome, Jen. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna Please go, happen. of course, <laughs> I'm gonna go off screen so that um, you guys can concentrate on Jen. So um, I'll just be right over here. So, so Jen. So tell me a little bit about um, some of the backstory first. Some people know you, and, you know, I get emails from people that say they, they feel like they know you already. Um, and so um, give us a little backstory for the people that don't know you yet or um, you got, um, kind of what's your, a little bit about you. Okay. Um, like what aspect? Well, like where you came from, like, you know, let's just start, let's start like, you know, as a little girl and um, high school and going through college, like, um, what you were up to and what was going on your health and your life and everything else. Okay. So, um, yeah, just redirect me if I go on too many tangents, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I guess growing up, I was, uh, really focused on academic things. I really loved school and I took myself very seriously and, um, but I really enjoyed that too. I loved the challenge. Um, sometimes I probably pushed a little too hard, but, um, yeah, I had a great experience growing up. I had a good family and um, those kinds of things. But I did have some physical issues. And especially later in high school, I struggled some with anxiety and depression. Um, and growing up, I had a lot of belly issues and things like that. And so, um, you know, when I got to college, I kind of shifted my focus. I still was very much into being academic and such. Um, I loved studying and learning things. But I really wanted to focus on relationships in my life and um, because I felt like that was my weak spot. And so I started focusing more there. And um, then uh, as I grew, I started to learn more about health and um, alternative ways of looking at that. I studied um, massage and went through a holistic health practitioner program at Mueller College and then ended up teaching. And I love teaching. That's always that was something I would role play when I was little, you know, I was making up homework for myself when I was five years old, sitting in the closet, um, trying to make up homework projects and stuff. So I've always loved teaching and I got to enjoy doing that in the realm of massage school, uh, which was really, really fun. And then I met you and went on our first date and I thought, oh my gosh, I just spent the last four years in in school, in massage school, learning about holistic things so I could even have a conversation with this guy. He's awesome. So, um, yeah. And well, cool. So, you know, um, when you were a little girl, um, mm -hmm. what did you want to be? What did you want to be when you were a little girl, like grade school, high school? Uh, I had all kind of pretty much switched every year, but it was usually something very, Kind of academic and professional like I thought about aeronautical engineer and I thought about being a doctor and um yeah just anything that was kind of brainy I knew I didn't want to be a lawyer I'm not good at arguing but uh yeah things like that so and you you mentioned to me before like you actually thought about being a missionary doctor kind of person tell us a little bit about that right so um in my high school years, I was part of a, a youth group and we um, ended up doing some mission trips where they were work trips. I really enjoyed going and serving with my hands and just being of service. And I also had fallen in love with biology and the human body and started to become fascinated with that. And so, um, you know, I had dreams and I also, um, my grandma took me on a trip to Switzerland and I fell in love with traveling and um, getting outside of my own culture and seeing things from a different perspective and seeing which things were actually uh, assumptions that I made because I had just been immersed in it growing up and which things were um, part of maybe uh, a, a bigger truth that was more, you know, worldwide. So I liked having those perspectives and I thought, you know, being a missionary doctor would kind of combine all of those things, being of service, seeing different cultures, and um, also, you know, learning about the body and, and how to heal things. So, um, so and yeah. what do you think? Yeah. And why do you think it? Um, there's so many different ways to go be a missionary or be of service and all that. What do you think um, the doctor part was all about? Well, I grew up in a medical family. Like my, um, I had many, I have many relatives that are part of the 
the medical field, mostly nurses. And so I have a special place in my heart for them. And um, it, yeah, I think that was mostly where that idea came from is I just was very comfortable with the medical system and, um, and the terminology all that kind of thing. And, um, and did you, you have any um, medical conditions of your own? You mentioned a little anxiety, depression, anything else um, to belly stuff. How, mm -hmm. how was life? How were you physically as a kid? I would say overall, I felt like I was uh, very healthy because I was athletic and active. Um, and I didn't realize at the time that things like anxiety and depression actually had their roots in a very physical cause many times. So I thought I had maybe was framing things wrong in my life or stressing myself out too much or things like that. And I didn't realize the connection between the gut and the brain and how much what I was eating and other factors like that might have been affecting the way I felt emotionally and things like that. So um, yeah, I look back in any physical things that I had, I see now, um, you know, after having taken a more holistic approach and and learn more about the body and its connection to those things. Um, yeah, I've just been able to address those things in a different way than I would have ever thought of growing up. And so, so um, what do you think you wanted to accomplish by um, going that route? Medical doctor, missionary, helping people all over the world. What were you looking to do? Um, like I said, I just always um, got a just such a sense of fulfillment being of service. And so I think that um, I, and I think I also was very humbled when I went on those trips to learn about conditions that other people were living in and things I took for granted that I didn't realize. And so, um, yeah, I think it was an avenue to, you know, give back and also be grateful for the life I had been given. Yeah, um, cool. And anything, um, anything more internal that you were looking to, to get out of that kind of life? Because it's a different life than some people, you know. Oh, well, I like challenge and I like adventure. I loved learning about things that were outside of my own assumptions and just uh, challenging my own beliefs. And I feel like going and living in a different culture um, and serving in that way, I think there was something calling me there that had to do with that. And then you didn't end up going the doctor route. Um, what happened? Like what, what, what challenges did you have or what, um, how did it go? Um, well, my freshman year of college and into my sophomore year, pre-med was my major and I loved the coursework. Um, but I really, like I said before, was stepping back and saying, wow, you know, I, I know how to do this academic thing. I know how to do this achieving thing, but I'm not very good at relationships and being present with people. And I could just tell that that was the spiritual journey that I needed to go on in life and where I needed to strengthen myself and where I needed to learn. And so, um, you know, I was thinking about this this morning in relation to unbecoming the modern woman that, um, so I, Ralph is going to take care of the kids a little bit. Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so yeah, I grew up with my mother working and in a culture and with friends where pretty much all the moms worked. There weren't really stay at home moms in my, my circle. And I gained a lot of value from that because I really felt like I could do anything and I could go and have a career. You know, I felt really affirmed and comfortable in that. I almost never questioned it. And then I got into college and I was surrounded by many more people who had had stay at home moms. And that really intrigued me. And I found myself yearning for that, even though it wasn't what I grew up with. And I so appreciated what I grew up with. I felt like that was a great way to grow up. And I still think that's a great way to grow up. But for me as a person, there was something in me that said um, what I wanted to learn in life and um, how I wanted to interact with my children 
um, you know, I really craved becoming a stay at home mom. And that was so counterintuitive to how I grew up in the way I, I was thinking of myself growing up. It was never something, you know, my parents never said anything negative about, um, stay at home moms. We just didn't know a lot of them. And so, uh, that was a real perspective shift for me was just even opening up to the idea of, oh, it's valuable. It can be a valuable thing to do in life to, to stay home with your children and raise them while they're young. I had never thought it wasn't valuable, but I had never even thought about it or considered it for myself. And so um, that was like this little thing that started me, I think, down this road of being fascinated with how we used to do things and indigenous cultures and um, the value of these subtle things that we have changed in our culture in the past, you know, few hundred years. Um, and just, you know, trying to get back to, you know, some of the wisdom that was contained in those things, but also acknowledging that, again, there are many different ways, like in this instance, to be a wonderful mother and to show things to your children. This was just the, the way of being a mother that resonated with me. So, but it, it ended up correlating to other things um, that I enjoyed studying about um, kind of almost an old fashioned way of doing things, I guess. Cool. So, so that epiphany about um, stay at home moms started to shift things. And then you started, you started going down a path of um, questioning other things too in the medical or the uh, how to get healthy kind of world. What were some of the big um do you have any stories about or any kind of times when um, big shifts happened for you in the um, how to live your life or how to stay healthy or how to take care of yourself? Um, like you, you and actually maybe before that, like you solved the um, the belly problems and the gut problems and the anxiety, depression. Maybe that story about how you, how that happened and any kind of things you learned around that. Okay. So, um, I think one of the first perspective changes that happened, like I remember where I was, I was studying in Barnes and Noble in San Diego um, when I first opened the book, The Web That Has No Weaver. And it is, it was kind of the introduction book that I had to read for school about Chinese medicine. And just the way they talked about the stories of the body um, and the difference between kind of the Western medicine perspective and focus on symptoms and what they saw as, you know, the, the Chinese medicine focus on root cause, that made so much sense to me. And I really resonated with that. And um, that helped me start shifting my mindset and also knowing where and how to question. And then um, on my first date with you, uh, we were talking, our first official date, we were um, talking about how I would often switch words around and I didn't realize that um, that something I was consuming, which was NutraSweet, could actually mimic neurotransmitters in my brain and be causing that problem. And so I quit cold turkey. I had been drinking diet Mountain Dew all through diet soda, all through, um, you know, my holistic health practitioner program. I'm sure that behind the scenes was shocking, but um, yeah, I just, I had never, you know, I just hadn't had that piece of information, but once I got it, then I changed that. And I also, um, you know, you talking about gluten-free and some of the problems gluten can cause and also some of the benefits of being gluten-free uh, with the information you had at the time, that was really powerful to me. And I decided to go gluten-free that night as well. And, um, that started me down like, wow, my belly doesn't, I didn't realize how often my belly was uncomfortable and how much I chose my foods based on how they made me feel. And I started to make that connection. Like, oh, I talk to my food and I see, you know, I'd already started cutting out in high school. I'd started cutting out, um, fast food because I would just end up doubled over in, uh, painful stomach cramps. And so I started to just eat certain things at these restaurants. And then there were some fast food places I just couldn't eat at at all. And so when the basketball team was voting where we would go, I would vote for the ones that I could get away with. And so, um, you know, that kind of all started to come together for me. And then the last thing that really made a big shift for me was 
um, adding in full fat because that stabilized my blood sugar and made it where I just wasn't panicked about food all the time. So, and it, you know, it just stabilized my mood. I felt so much better. Um, and I feel like that had other health ramifications as well, but that was the, you know, those were the big things I noticed, um, and the things that I think made a huge impact really quickly. Cool. And so you started, um, with this new plan of, um, new way of eating, new way of not putting toxins in your body, Mm -hmm. new way of thinking about, um, the information you were getting as you've gone through it and you've learned, um, more stuff, what, um, what problems or what conflicts have you run into along the way? What things have been, um, what more have you uncovered along the way that's, um, what's been some of the most surprising things you've uncovered and some of the biggest challenges and conflicts you've had um, as you've uncovered um, this new way of, of eating and caring for yourself? Uh, well, I, I think one of the first big hurdles to get over for me was the full fat one. Like I said, you know, gluten-free and giving up NutraSweet, that was instantly like the day we talked about it. But full fat took me, I don't know, maybe a month or two to wrap my head around it because I had grown up hearing from authorities, you know, my mom had heard from her, you know, her whole industry, the authorities in her life, and she worked in coronary care, she had heard that the disease she was seeing was caused by fat in your diet and salt. And so um, I that was very ingrained in how I thought. And I also you know, I wanted to, to not be overweight because I didn't think that was good for my body. And um, it was so ingrained from everything we'd seen, you know, everything my, my mom had been told. And um, fortunately, you know, even though I ended up learning different information, she taught us that food was important and it affected how our bodies felt and how healthy we were. And so that's, you know, the important lesson I got out of that and that has stayed with me. And um, so even though I've learned different information since, I got that really ingrained in me. But it took me a while to, I I was almost fearful of eating fat because of all the bad things that I had heard would happen to me if I did eat it. And so, and of course, we were very specific about the fats we were eating. We weren't just willy nilly eating fats, but um, I really had to learn how to deprogram that out of my brain and to get over my fear and say, hey, what if I just try this for a month and see how I feel, see what my experience is. And then also, you know, starting to read research that, um, you know, had a different perspective helped my head. But really what changed was just being brave and trying it and seeing how it felt in my body. And it felt my body really craved it. It was like, whoa. And then it made sense why when I was in high school and depriving myself constantly of fat, um, why every once in a while I would cheat and I would just crave like a bagel with tons of peanut butter on it because it had fat and protein in it. My body really craved that. And I didn't didn't realize why so much until later on. And cool. And so um, what do you think was the big um, shift you had as a result of changing this big way that you thought about how your body worked and how um, health worked? And what was your, um, what, um, did you start to question more things? Did, um, what, what happened as a result of, you know, you start off wanting to be a medical doctor and then you were way into science and what you were being taught. And then, um, but you were having some conditions and then you solved those and you had to shift a lot of beliefs around um, health and food and, and other things. Um, what did that do for you now moving forward over the last few years in the way that you look at um, what you're told and what's going on? Um, what did that do? Um, well, I have always enjoyed kind of questioning what I have been taught, but I think it um, really brought to the surface the importance of doing that and also just always having the perspective of, um, you know, it's easy to look back in history and be like, oh, how did they not know that? And of course, we know everything now. And to realize, no, we're still in process right now in this point of history. And so um, to 
to just know that it's okay to not know, but also, yeah, it really um, brought me to a place of feeling like uh, I don't need to question every authority in my life because some questions and th some authorities don't really affect my daily life or don't matter in a sense. But um, any authority that is a worthy authority can be questioned and scrutinized and it will stand up. It will, it will survive that process. It will be stronger for that process. So um, I guess it taught me to never fear questioning and to always know that I'm in process, that what I think I know now will, you know, in 10 years, I'll look back and be like, oh, wow, I had made some progress, but look where I'm at now. Like, we're always evolving and to be open to that process and to be humble to that process, but also challenge myself with that process. Um, yeah. Does that answer your yeah. question? Yeah. And, um, um, you know, a lot of women, I see them, I know them. They're our friends, my friends too, but um, a lot of women um, reach out to you and, and ask you stuff. Um, it's like you're their, um, source the resource of, of information um and then so can you talk a little bit about um what made you even come up with that term unbecoming the modern woman and when you look at all the women that are that you interact with and know and that reach out to you and they do reach out to you in big ways asking big questions about all sorts of stuff um talk a little bit about unbecoming the modern woman and because you definitely took a different route and um yeah tell us a little bit about that and maybe in relation to um, that might be able to help women and and um what they're going through and what kind of answers they're looking for what is unbecoming the modern woman all about okay hmm. um well i have to say that i've also been fortunate in that i have had lots of people come into my life like anyone questioning me i'm also learning from them too which is awesome um so it's a continual exchange um and as far as going down the road of unbecoming the modern woman, I think I really started thinking about that um, when I realized, like I said, again, how much I really crave staying at home with my children while they're young, um, because that was a little bit counter to, um, you know, how I was maybe intuitively thought of my self-esteem growing up, even though I, uh, like I said, I never consciously thought that that wasn't valuable. I realized later that I put a lot of importance on having a career um, per se. And so um, making that shift and then also starting to dive into the food aspect of things and seeing the wisdom that was in these cultural traditions that had been passed down and really developed for thousands of years of humans really observing intently and and the their lives and the existence of humanity really depending on us paying attention in a really super deep way um, that is different than um, than kind of how we do now. And that's the idea of the clock of the long now. But we might have to get back to that because I think someone just got hurt. And no, so, no, I didn't get hurt. So, oh. so um, yep. So this is why it took a while to do the interview. So we'll be doing <laughs> we'll be a back. couple of other Thank interviews. You. And um, and so, all right. Thanks. Bye for now.